guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I just thought I'd do a quick video on this little machine here. Um, it's basically a carbon cleaning machine. People are charging probably about £100 uh, per car. This is something more you what you would use at home uh, to do it on, on, on your own car. It's pretty controversial. I'll go into how it works um, in terms of the theory behind it in a, in a moment once I talk through the setup of the machine. So, some of the equipment, what you're going to need is um, first you're going to need the hydrogen peroxide. Um, it's really corrosive. I've actually used mine up, so I haven't got it here to show you, but it comes in a little airtight um, tub. And what you need is the uh, kitchen scales, something some, similar to this would do. Um, you want to really mix 50 grams of that per one litre of water. Um, you want to make sure you've got all your PPE. So, plastic glasses, gloves, um, really want to stay away from that stuff and you're going to need this measuring jug as well um, and something to mix it, make sure it's wooden and not metal. Yeah. Um, the water as well, the water here, if you have a look, it's deionized water, not distilled water. So it's really important you use that and not distilled, there's a big difference between the two. Yeah. Um, in terms of setting the machine up, it's pretty straightforward, to be honest. Um, I've wired it all up in terms of it just comes with one plug. Um, you've got this comes connected as well. So what you want to do is once it's mixed in here, you want to open this up. The capacity for this machine says here, if you have a quick look, normal water line and feeding water line. So you want to make sure it's at full capacity. Yeah. Uh, the capacity for this actual machine is one litre, so it's nice and convenient. But in any case, what you do, you mix it up, use that, whack it in there, straighten it, dissolves really quick, so you don't need to mix it too long. Um, once that's done, make sure this is closed. You also want to then undo this and put anywhere between an inch and a half and two inches of water so probably around this sort of line here yeah um, once you switch, switch the machine on you'll see this meter go up there's a fan at the back here you'll be able to hear that coming on and off so it needs a bit of um, priming because it's doing the electrolysis now so it take a little while to build the actual gas up if you have a look at this nozzle here it's tiny in terms of the hole. It's almost like just a little bit bigger than what you'd get in a car injector. So this is currently closed at the moment. You let the machine run. Once it's built up enough gas, you're going to see that this is going to switch off. And this is your pressure tester. Some of the machines, they come with a gauge here. You could fit a little gauge um, if you like. Uh, once it goes off, I'm going to show you guys that there's enough pressure there and then how we actually, what's the theory behind it, how we actually, where we inject this in the car as well. Um, it will work for normal cars, direct injection as well. It is different to TerraClean. TerraClean works on the fuel system. This works where the fuel, uh, sorry, where the air is actually injected um, and not on the fuel system. So they're very different in how they go about doing their job. So you can see the machine switched off now. So if I pull this up, you're going to hear the gas coming out. You can see there's quite a lot of pressure there. And there you go. As the pressure drops, again, it will continue replenishing that gas. Um, in terms of how much this 50 grams uh, per one liter is enough to run this machine at full capacity for about 10 hours, you should not see, well, you're not going to really see a lot of this water disappear. Um, now and then, it m you might need topping up here, this line, maybe after four or five hours worth of use, but you're not really going to lose any water. But after the 10 hours is done, you do need to top it up with the electrolyte again and make sure the water level is correct. Um, again, if I show you guys this, you can regulate how much comes out of here. That's on maximum. And you can hear that, and that's hydrogen coming out, so it's very flammable. Perfect. Right, so I'm going to switch this off for now, and I'm just going to show you where this is actually injected into the car. Right, so I'm just going to show you guys where you inject that nozzle. Um, 
depends on what car it is. I'm just using my RS4 as an example. Um, in the ideal world, you want to inject it after the airflow meter. Um, otherwise, it's going to give you a bit of funny reading. It's not really going to do any damage anyway. Um, but in this case, nice and easy. So you want to undo this. You want to inject the hydrogen gas going there into the intake and then close it up so it's nice and airtight. So the theory behind it is the hydrogen it goes here into the intake. It's obviously much more flammable um, than oxygen, so the flash point on hydrogen is much higher. So in theory, as the engine starts um, using the air and the mix with hydrogen, it will burn quicker, and in theory, it should burn off some of the uh, deposits that are sitting at the top of the valves. Obviously, the RS4, this car is notorious for carbon cleaning. This isn't gonna have anywhere. It's not gonna be anywhere near as effective as taking that manifold off and doing it. Um, but on the average car, um, it's going to be pretty effective. This will probably need a manual cleaner. I'm going to do it on here. Um, I'll follow up with a few videos. We're going to really experiment with it. I'm going to try and see if it has a big difference on diesel, petrol. Does it have an impact on MPG? On the cars that I've done it already, um, there, there does appear to be a difference. Um, engine tends to be a lot more smoother. Um, again, it's controversial. People are saying, look, it doesn't work. Some people are saying it really works. I've experienced it, there is a change, but I really want to find a way of measuring it. So uh, there will be more videos coming up um, doing some experiments with all sorts of cars to see just how effective that carbon clean is. In terms of the amount of runtime, so for your average four cylinder engine, this is a relatively small machine, so it's going to take about an hour at full capacity to do it. Um, when you're running the machine, you want to give it a rev maybe every 10, 12 minutes. Um, and you know, as we produce other videos, as I put more videos together, we'll see if there's anything funny, any carbon, anything like that that can be seen out the back. Um, as you go up through the range, a six cylinder engine, maybe it's going to take about one and a half hours, and something like a V8, a bigger engine, maximum is going to take about two hours. You can get machines that will be able to do an engine this size uh, in an hour, but this one's not going to be able to cope with it. That's going to be a much bigger industrial. This is something that you could do at home. Um, so that's why I'm keen to experiment with it. Guys, thank you for watching, and uh, yeah, watch out for more videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And um, I'm gonna have to redo this bit, yeah. But it's stuck. <laughs> Hi, is it recording now? Yeah. I'm gonna get cross-eyed if it's too close to me. <laughs>